more, but I have to like set them up. I know it's just Steam Greenlight all the time, but there there will be more. There will be more. Okay, let me uh let me get music, the proper music for Steam Greenlight. Um, But don't worry, there will be more uh, physics. Uh, yeah, okay, well, the physics-based part is like a stretch. But you know what I mean when I say physics. I mean like so, the, the questionable physics. <laughs> okay. Also, this is the best, the best Wii Shop channel remix ever. I, I, I don't know, it's, it's so good. Okay, anyway, uh, Steam Green Lights. I want a Rube Goldberg, oh, I want a Rube Goldberg machine game. Yeah, a new one would be nice. One that isn't Bad Rats. We have voted on 619 Steam Green Light applications. 619, chat. Why is there a Harambe game? <laughs> Peeve, are you still here? This one's for you. We're gonna start with Harambe, then we're gonna go back to our actual queue. Is Peeve still here? Peeve, there's a there's a there's a Harambe game. You you need to watch this, Peeve. It's let me let me uh, update the title and all that. See, Peeve has a special place in his heart for memes and meme games, meme-based games. Peeve, Peeve uh, japed me on Twitter yesterday, today, yesterday, yesterday, when he, um, <clears throat> when he got his new emotes and uh, he dropped a meme on me, a fairly obscure meme um, about like a Sonic OC, like literally that obscure. A meme about a Sonic OC from like fucking 4chan or something. And all it, all he did, he was very, very subtle about it. Again, subtle use of memes. He, it was a misspelling and I was just like, you know, I assume for some reason, even though Peeve is a very learned man, fuck off Peeve. Even though Peeve is a very learned man, I just assumed he made a misspelling. Nothing personnel kid, yeah, exactly. And I was like, well, maybe when you learn, it was Cold Steel, yes. And I'm like, maybe when you learn to spell personal, we can talk. And it's just like, but the thing is, the Peeve hates on memes all the time. All the time. So Peeve, this one's gonna be for you. Because I know how much you love your memes. This fucking emotes. <laughs> nothing, nothing personnel, kid. Yeah. It's the worst. I hate that you've created the best emote combination on Twitch. I hate you for that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I hate that it's it's that good. It kills me. <laughs> like I I love I love the emote combination. It's fucking the worst. Oh, that reminds me. One day, if I hit my emote tier, I can, uh... Let me show you the art I made Cannon Breed to show him what I wanted. Oh no, Peef. <laughs> oh no. I'm ready, Peef. And then we're gonna watch the Harambe game.
not a dick. <laughs> Blood shit. <laughs> Peeve, did you unlock five more emotes? Like recently, or did you retire emotes to get those? Holy shit, those are good. I love I love your, your little artistic explanation. It's perfect. You replaced five emotes? He deleted good emotes? I was gonna say, holy shit, that is... Yeah, I need to update some emotes. Chat, we might have an emote overhaul soon, because we've got some ideas. Uh, Ty, if you want our friendship to last, you better fucking... <laughs> well, guys, sure, we'll see. Let's let the game stand on its own two gorilla legs, ape. Rambe was an ape. ape. Ape feet. Here we go with Peeves. Peeve is the the uh, co-creator of this, and it is called Harambe Now and Forever. The most anticipated game of 2017. I believe it. points <laughs> he's dodging crosshairs grabbing American flags and there's a child dangling from his hand <laughs> this is amazing Peeve what are you talking about this is a masterpiece freedom points wow it was made in Unreal Engine. <laughs> I'm gonna take a guess. That's the whole fucking game. Are you kidding me? People are gonna pay like $5 for that? Of course they are, Peeve. Welcome to Steam Greenlight. You should know this by now. I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to say n every comment but one will be positive. Positive in like the ironic, like, yay, dicks out for Harambe. All the comments but one. Here we go. Wow, you're hilarious, dude. Really, though, it's annoying and every- oh. This game is an insult to his legacy? Ignoring the near universal awfulness of the meme game, why choose Harambe? Why are people taking this seriously? Oh, wow. Oh, I guess memes. I figured like the internet would eat this up. Done in bad taste. <laughs> Done in bad taste. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Done in bad taste. <laughs> Hell no, get out, no memes. Your stupid meme is as dead as the dumb gorillas. There's Skull Trumpet again. He's always here. He's always here a few hours ahead of us. I'm gonna ask me again later. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to actual Steam Greenlight. <laughs> Our real Steam Greenlight queue is here. <clears throat> they're, so they're ironically negative instead of ironically positive? Yeah, I expected them to be like ironically positive. Skull Trumpet secretly has access to Ty's future. I think he does. I think Skull Trumpet is a viewer of mine and or Peeves because he's 
he's always one step ahead of my Steam Greenlight queue. It's like, but I know he knows who we are. I know it's it's gotta be true. It can't just be some rando who just in their free time goes to every Steam Greenlight. You know what, maybe it is. I take that back, it probably is. <laughs> okay. Anyway, our queue for today is Jaws of Extinction, Azure Saga Pathfinder, Mazgian, Mazgian, uh, Cube Creatures, Cosmoprom, uh, Dark Grim M Mariopolis, uh, Magic Magic Adventures, Ma Magic Adventures, and Bones Destroyer. <laughs> Check out his page, see if he plays. Well, we'll okay. The next time I see his his his, uh, his name in the comments, we'll I'll check uh, Geistrick. I'm sure we'll see him in every single review. Uh, weird. I expected Skull Trumpet to like, you know, pretend to like the. Her, anyway, mm, Peeve. Peeve, if you're still here, I would like you to choose the first shovelware we're going to uh, review. Jaws of Extinction, Azure Saga, Mazgian, Cube Creatures, Cosmoprom, Prom, Prom, Dark Grim Mariopolis, Magic Adventures, or Bones Destroyer. Bones Destroyer is what they call me in the club. What does that even mean? Peeve already got a game though? You mean got one of these? That's fine. He can choose which one I'm gonna. Bones Destroyer, of course. <laughs> Alright, cool. Are you serious? This is... This is Bones Destroyer. would compare it to four honor combat. You dick. I want to know why some of the background elements or whatever are like squares and some of them are like squares with crosses. Like windows maybe? Well, that was uh... <clears throat> that was... Bones Destroyer. I'm thinking game of the year, like in advance, like pave the way, nothing else needs to come out. Bones Destroyer is an arcade wave type top down action shooter. In this game you will need to shoot red skeletons and get money. <laughs> then you can buy new weapons. The main goal is to kill skeleton boss at the end. Can you survive till this battle? Was this made in Flash? I don't even think it, like, Flash is cleaner than that. Ty, that's called modern art, okay? I, it is. Holy shit, my, my friends, I don't even, this is, this is next level. So I've been developing games, and by developing games, I mean I've been getting into game development. And after doing, after, after using Game Maker, studio for 20 minutes I could make this whole game that's the this is this is an example of baby's first game and this comes up a lot of times on mine and peeves like in our rants about steam greenlight this is someone who learned to make a game like while doing a tutorial or something like that and was like 
okay, that's my game. Let's ship it. And they threw skeletons in and they're like, let's go. And it's like, no. There are a thousand games on new grounds that make this look like even more of a joke than it is. Uh, this is, this is, well, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five because I like the idea of killing skeletons and getting money. Just getting paid to kill red skeletons. But this is a five out of a hundred. This is a fuck no, just stop. <laughs> more like boner destroyer because now I'm forever flaccid. I need to f I need to add the skull trumpet as a friend. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't play souls. I, ex I expected him to somehow be connected. I'm adding him as a friend. He's from Kentucky. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> it started playing again. Anyway. Fuck it. Fuck it. Just to show our uh, solidarity to Mr. Skull Trumpet. Now that I've sent my friend request to Mr. Skull Trumpet, I feel like I may, he, some of his celebrity may, uh, may rub off on me. Ty never added me on Steam, but will add a fucking trumpet. Yeah, but it's Skull Trumpet. Spare Cake Mix, this is bigger than you and I. This is, this is much bigger than you and I. No, no, wait, I just wanted to show the Skull Trumpet. PvP thump, PvP what, PvP nope, and PvP one and two contact arms. Yeah, that makes sense, because Bloodborne. Blood... Blood what? Who? Anyway, uh, Bones Destroyer gets a five and a no thanks. Let's move on. Jaws of Extinction. I never added me, Katy Perry, but added a trumpet. I have had you on my Steam friends list for like years, Geistra, please. <clears throat> Are you trying to summon him? Do you want us all to get duded? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking peeve. Is that a man? Yeah, mangry. <laughs> Worth. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to Jaws of Extinction. What is that? Oh, that's that's one of his his Halloween emotes, Dan. Yes. Placeholder models and UI graphics have been used. This is this is not a good start to your Steam Greenlight pitch. Placeholder models and UI graphics have been used. Enjoy. What am I gonna enjoy? Eden Nader was a beautiful place. I grew up on this island. It was a paradise. Okay. A home. And now, the outbreak has hit the shores of Eden Nader. Our perfect home is suffering from an infection. But together, we will be the ones to cure it. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only the light can. We must stand together. Humanity itself is in the jaws of extinction. Oh.
Oh no. <clears throat> it's too it's too early. The game looks like it runs at like three frames per second. It's a slideshow. Why? There's so much potential here. And you you release it so early on the Steam Greenlight. Mm. Okay, so there's a few problems here. The whole, like, it's using placeholder models and, and assets. That's a very ambiguous term. This looks way better than Last of Us, totally. Uh, the problem is, I don't know which... When you, when you say that about your pitch, I don't know what you... Do you mean all of them are, are borrowed? Like... Are these, did you get these from someone? Did you rip them from a game? Were they, were they purchased? Like, what, what does that mean? I, do, I can't trust anything I just saw. So if I can't trust anything I just saw, I, I can't use any of the visuals as an indication of the game. There's a story, there's some voice acting. But other than that, everything looked... You know, I don't know if any of this is you. I don't know if the developer can make something uh, at least to the quality of what we saw in the video, which if it hadn't showed the gameplay, I would've been like, yeah. Okay. Character design, John Nader. Okay, so I guess they created the main character, maybe? <laughs> the T-Pose. Tony Game Edged. Oh god, no. Nick. Ty, just show a picture of one zombie, please. I love them so much. <laughs> Peeve, I'm not... You, you know, this is no place to... To... To fulfill your various fetishes. I know you're all about the zombies. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, this, this looks promising, but it's way too early. Like, I... <sighs> I don't know what any of these, I don't know if any of that was was made in-house or anything. The gameplay looked terrible. Like, like unplayable garbage. But the cutscenes, like I said, the cutscenes look impressive. But everything else was like, the, the gameplay was just so bad. I can't, it's just too early. You, you've got this nice polished Steam Greenlight page and you're showing all this stuff and the gameplay looks atrocious. Like worse than, the worse than like DayZ when it first came out and that looked pretty bad. That still looks bad today. No, it's not that bad. Anyway, this is a no thanks. I'm gonna give it a, give it a 35 because I feel like if they clarified what was temporary and what the final game graphics actually are and they showed us gameplay that didn't look like it was five frames per second generic zombie shooting garbage. You know what? 30 out of 100, not 35. Uh, but this is a no. This is a flat no, not a chance. Um, the logo looks good, but probably still... Yeah, it's, it's okay. No, I believe... I believe that logo is, is in-house. They know what they're... They know somewhat what like what they're doing i just can't believe they would release this so early such a like such a shaky looking game yeah of course point of metal again this when i look at steam Greenlight, i try to look at now i'm like yeah the potential means a lot and if a game looks uh has shaky elements but overall is strong then yeah i'll vote it i'll i'll upvote it but this just not I wouldn't be excited at all to play this given what I saw. It would need a, it needs a lot of cleaning up. Show me those happy cre uh, characters with guns halfway down the page. Oh these, yeah. <laughs> I like the the spiked baseball bat. And that why 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 doesn't this guy get a gun? He only gets pot. He just gets drugs. Shit. Well, I guess he's being defended by his friends. Like, well-dressed crossbow, ready for action. You know, gloves, spiky bat, assault rifle on her back. Good footwear, ready to rock. This dude just fucking climbed out of his man cave <laughs> with, with a giant blunt. 
this <laughs> and no no zombie fighting skills whatsoever. He's not even wearing shoes. <laughs> This man is ready for the apocalypse. His, sh his shirt, super camouflage too. Zombies will never, although I don't know how much zombies rely on like sight, but you wouldn't be able to hide. <laughs> he, they're ready for a big night out, it's true. I love that. Anyway, anyway, this is a no. And we're moving on. He climbed out of his Volkswagen. Oh, chat, I have a funny story. <laughs> I have a funny story for you, chat. So uh, today, Candace and I did some house hunting. We're in the process of moving. Well, we're trying to find a new place to live outside of the city we live in right now. So we're, we're looking at houses. So when you go house hunting, um, there's a bunch of different choices you can do. But anyway, we were looking through like real estate websites and whatever. And as well as checking out things like Kijiji and Craigslist and everything like that. I don't know if where, wherever you are in the world, you may or may not have those, but it's like, it's like, um, you know, sites where you can just sell and buy and stuff and they include housing. We came across one that was, so most of the places we're looking are listed at like, let's say 1500 to $2,000 a month or they have like a, um, like a mortgage or whatever. And we came across one that was $200 a month and we're like, what? And we look and it was an 80s motorhome. <laughs> It was, it was, <laughs> the way it worked was some dude was going to share his 80s motorhome, his 100 square foot 80s motorhome with you, share it. And there'd be like a, there's a double bed and like a guest bed. And, and th there were 20, 21 photos of this motorhome and like the inside and the outside. It, it was, it was amazing. Like I was just blown away because like the guy was selling, like upselling it super hard. He's just like talking about how like, um, he was a, he's a, a film director and he's currently, you know, exploring alternative housing, uh, housing <laughs> like choices, which basically means he's poor and he can only afford to live in a motorhome, but he can't even afford that. So he needs to split it with a roommate, but it was a dude who wanted a roommate to live with him in his eighties motorhome. And it was, and none of it was updated. It was the same motorhome it was from the eighties, like peeling wallpaper and like weird ass ancient wood panels on everything. Like everything was falling apart. Old, like, um, like license plates as decorations all over the place. And like, there was like a poster that said like, I'd rather be at the beach and like, yeah, it was, it was so bizarre. Use the wrong pie emote. Oh, <laughs> it was really, really sketch. Oh, don't, don't stab my dog, Peeve, please. Fuck that bandit emote is. <laughs> so when are you moving in? Yes, yeah, see, that's, that's the follow up uh, next weekend. Next weekend, we decided to consolidate our existence. We can save $1,300 a month <laughs> by uh, moving in uh, to this motorhome, this 100 square foot motorhome. Me, Candace, our two pets, uh, my streaming rig, everything, along with the current owner. How, <laughs> how fucked is that? And I, I thought it was trolling me. Like I thought the whole thing was a joke because I'm like, there's no way anyone who lives in a 100 square foot motor home is looking for a, uh, <laughs> is looking for a roommate. No, it was true. 1300 a month. Yeah, I, I would be saving 1300 a month because the average cost monthly of housing around here is 1500. Well, outside of the city is 1500 to 2000. Inside the city, it's like three grand plus for a nice, for like a house. Cause the houses around here are all like a million dollars, even if they're a crack house. A crack house in downtown Toronto is a million dollars. A crack house, like a, a house that is, that is, it would not pass any inspection and is falling apart and has rats and, and portals to, to like, um, to Cthulian nightmare realms. A million dollars starting. <laughs> it's the worst. 
Uh, thank you, Point of Metal, for the five bits. <clears throat> is is it full of crack? Well, see, in that case, you could turn a profit. So no, they take all the crack with them. It's just the after <laughs> it's made of crack. No, it just has lots of cracks in it. <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm turning into a giggly mess and I haven't even I haven't even had anything to drink. Yeah, Lolly it knows what's what. <clears throat> um Okay, cool. Rats in the walls. See it's it's like free pets. Anyway, I thought I would share my bizarre story. I'll see if I can dig up later chat when the stream is over, I'll see if I can dig up the listing and I'll post it on Twitter because it's it's amazing what it is. Uh but yeah, anyway, uh, the next thing we're looking at is, uh, actually, you know what? I bet you I can find it right now. I bet you I can take two seconds and actually find the listing. Give me one second. I just, I, I gotta show it to you. It's so fucking funny. I found it. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, hang on. Okay, let me keep the music on. I think this is the same one, although it's saying um, you get the whole motorhome to yourself chat. All right, here we go. So this is it. <laughs> Private motorhome, entire unit, all to yourself. Okay, two bedroom, it's $500. This is a different, this is, this is a different listing. Maybe he put two listings up, one where you live with him and one where you get the whole motorhome. Anyway, this is literally what, what, what I found while looking for a home. Like furnished cottage cabin, no laundry, no smoking, street parking. Okay, great deal. Lakeside living for $500 a month, 500 bucks. Most of, well, a lot of you don't live in cities. Some of you live in like, you know, smaller towns or you live in suburbia or whatever. The idea of paying $500 a month is like, you know, you should get a nice place, depending on where you are in the world. $500 in like a small area is really nice. $500 a month, you get the entire motorhome that sleeps three to four people, free breakfast included. I don't, how does that work? You get this amazing deal in exchange for some compromises, read below. Be a part of the new digital economy like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, whim do trip advisor to save money live in clean healthy fresh air better better than many homes that have a problem with indoor air pollution okay live as a guest in a retro classic vintage self-contained 80s motorhome parked on a street by beautiful lake ontario near to a park that has restrooms <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have a bathroom. You live you live near a place that has bathrooms. <laughs> Restrooms, bike routes, skating rink. Sort of like living in a country RV campground, but in the middle of a vibrant city. <laughs> Easy walk to a beach lake in a great location, a short distance from colleges, blah, 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 dollar store, McDonald's, harbor front, ferries, etc. You get to use the entire unit that has one large double bed and a small single bed. No charge for extra guests. Inexpensive, clean, comfortable, Corktown living, uh, wherever that is. <clears throat> Live like Joni Mitchell in a paved paradise, but not in a parking lot. Ideal situation for people who want to beat the high cost of living, uh, such as students, vacationers, retirees, actors, artists, musicians, tech people. Um, that motorhome looks like an ice cream truck. Yes, look, look at this. Hang on, let's, uh, wait, oh no, no. I don't want to show you the photos till we finish the description. This is actually a thing. 
that was in my, like while house hunting. Motorhome has a new modern quiet generator inverter that supplies 1600 watts uh, of household current that can power heater, air conditioner, hair dryer, microwave, computer, etc. Also has three automotive batteries for lighting, charging cell phones, etc. Motorhome is very comfortable and warm in most weather. Not practical to leave the heat on for more than eight to 10 hours a day in the winter. We have, we have very cold winters in this part of the world. Eight to 10 hours. If you leave the heat on for more than eight to 10 hours, you're, it's not practical. Do you know how much that would suck? <laughs> you're in a motor home and you can't turn the heat on. Uh, <clears throat> you're responsible to buy gasoline and put it in the generator as needed. Therefore, it is ideal for someone who sleeps at night and is working, going to school, or out and about during the day. Plumbing, toilet, and holding tanks cannot be used in the winter. Plumbing cannot be used in the winter. Toilets and holding tanks cannot be used in the winter. In the Canadian winter that never ends. Wi-Fi is available in nearby coffee shops. That's, that's a feature, by the way, but not in the unit. Most people in the RV community in this asphalt jungle live quite well used or live qu quite well using live live quite well using batteries. Rechargeable devices, nearby facilities of restrooms, showers at fitness centers, community recreation centers, Starbucks. This 1980s 19 foot long motorhome is for stationary use and not for driving. Like, it's not a joke though. Like, look at these photos. This is this is real. These photos were taken in the 80s. Hang on. You can't, there isn't a camera in the world that would capture. Maybe we are getting trolled. But anyway, this, this is, this is actually, and then the rest of the photos are like photos of the city. <laughs> like photos of the city because because that's a feature I suppose of living in a stationary motor home by a lake it this is actually the stereotype of living in a in a van down by the lake this is this is reality <clears throat> uh, life is good at the beach like do you know how much like this hasn't been vacuumed in two decades. There's probably so much like mildew and mold and fucking like skin flakes sunken in. And like, you can tell this thing has been smoked in for like 15 years before smoking was frowned upon everywhere. The, the, everything has this yellowish hue. Now that could just be that the camera, no, actually everything else looks modern. This is, this is, these were taken recently. Anyway, good old skin flakes. Well, yeah, every everything has is, ends up covered in, but Ty, it has fresh air and no interior pollution. Anyway, chat, I wanted to show you, house hunting is the worst thing. I wouldn't recommend it on, I wouldn't um, wish it on my worst enemy. Trying to move out of the city into somewhere nearby is the worst, worst experience I've had in a long time. Um, but that made me fucking laugh. Like when we found that out and I realized there were 21 photos of, uh, um, there were 21 photos of a motor home. I, I laughed like hard. <laughs> that thing is outside your apartment right now, isn't it Ty? No Trent, cause you're not allowed driving it. And it's down by the river and, or the lake and I don't live by the lake. Well, I live like a 30 minute walk from the lake. Which is worse, that house or the worst game you've... Oh, the worst game on Steam Greenlight, by far. <clears throat> I use the word house loosely, yeah. Anyway, I will continue letting you guys know how our house hunting is going, but I thought that was worth sharing with the world because it's just amazing. Um, hey Ty, what do you think about having a Craigslist post rating system? That would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. What if someone killed the dude advertising to share it with a roommate and they're offering the whole thing up? Well, that would be a sound business strategy, Teal Tiger. Okay. Azure Saga. 
Pathfinder. Let's go. Mass Hive Media. We have been wandering for generations, and we finally found what we seek. But if they are to find what they... Then they are another civil war. Okay. Holy shit! Oh. That's okay. The... There... Okay, there's a lot going on here. It's like three different games. Holy shit, okay. Looks like mobile game shit? Why does it look like mobile game? It doesn't- why? What do you mean it looks like a mobile game? Like, was there on-screen, like, big, big on-screen buttons? Any, anyway, this looks like- okay. So, the cutscene is- oh yes, there are big giant buttons. Okay. Mobile game or otherwise. I wish the game was- was this. Because I am a huge sucker for Final Fantasy Tactics. I think Final Fantasy Tactics has, is one of the coolest just styles of video games. And that and that goes for all the games that use this kind of like isometric, grid-based, like board game kind of feel. Like there's a ton of them. Uh, Vagrant Story and uh, Shining Force series and uh, anyway. Even like, um, yeah, fuck. Anyway, but then it cut to like this, which... If this were the game by itself, I'd be like, eh, but the rest of the game holds it up pretty good. Yeah, tactics, ogre tactics, all that stuff. This is surprisingly well done. Mobile or otherwise, this this is this is really cool. I mean, there are big buttons on the side. I imagine it's probably a mobile game. Is it a mobile port or is it just being planned for mobile? Azure Saga Pathfinder is a unique story-driven tactical turn-based RPG with a mixture of sci-fi and medieval fantasy. Visualized in a stunning 2.5D isometric drawn world, you will be playing as Sink, the son of the head scientist from Nomad Space Human Colony that has been stranded on an unknown planet. So, why not stream tactics? One day, one day I will. Uh, one day I will do Final Fantasy Tactics, but there's too much important stuff coming out right now. Uh, but I will, I will go back and play classics that like I grew up with. The problem is some of like games like Final Fantasy Tactics are many streams, like they're huge. So this is crazy. I like it's interesting that it's not pixel art either. It's 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 fully painted. Oh, these little cutscene illustrations are so nice too. Really nice graphic design. Like, the combat... The paper doll style animation combat is a bit awkward, but it's really well done for what it is. This is on the iOS store. Doesn't look terrible. No, no, no. We run into a lot of mobile ports, and a lot of them are terrible. <clears throat> however... Uh, however, this, this looks... This is a really good mobile port. This is the kind of game that I think for sure deserves to be on a PC. Because there's like, this is already more impressive than almost every mobile game I can think of. Uh, yeah, I have nothing really negative to say about this at all. Um, I would say there's almost too much going on with the three different, um, like the, between the cutscenes, the isometric overworld, uh, the, the side-scrolling kind of, like, uh, RPG battle system, and the dialogue, like, it, you, they all use different 
different sprites and different, so it may be a bit disjointed, but I have a feeling they'll stitch it together pretty well. This right here is, this is storytelling. Not gonna let you through, not while I'm still breathing. That lowercase I though. How? Oh, that kills, why? Why is that a lowercase I, but that's a capital I? That's why. Why? <laughs> is there anybody else in the chat that, that, that physically hurts you? That physically lowercase I hurts you? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're in the age of, of internet culture and a lot of people use lowercase i's and stuff. In fact, I do quite often when I'm just quickly chatting, but it's okay. It was a, it's a, it's a mis, it's a, it's a spelling mistake, but triple check that shit. Uh, very well. See, I mean, sync, uh, we are in front of airs protection wall now our city our cities is surrounded by strong walls like this once the guards open the gate we can enter and rest so the english is a bit shaky uh but overall this is pretty impressive uh it has mega potential mega 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 potential ty it's right there they did it again you passed it what peeve no no, we were doing good. Oh, Jesus. It hid though. I thought it was like, sigh. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Oh, capital S for the name, but lowercase. Anyway, overall, this is really impressive. There are definitely shaky elements across the board, but this is, very well made. Uh, the menus are really nice. This is a really nice interface. Holy shit. Uh, text is nicely laid out. I mean, maybe it's because it's a mobile game. All the eyes are lowercase. Well, anyway. Uh, maybe it's because it's a mobile game, but I, this is... Damn. Damn. What's the map look like? Uh, the world map's okay. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give this a yes. I'm going to give it a... I'm close to giving it a 70. 70 is usually my mark of like, okay, now we're talking. But it's not quite there. I'm gonna give it a 60. I'll give it a 65. I'll give it a 65 because this right here is like a breath of, well, not fresh air, but it's, it's a breath of nostalgic air. <laughs> Uh, I'll give it a 65. It's not perfect. It's missing all kinds of, you know, it's got lots of glaring issues, but it looks fun and it looks like done. Like it, it, it's not something that's unfinished. This is what the game's going to be like. It's like I'm seeing animated versions of all of the pieces. So I think it's good. Um, awesome classic render 2.5D isometric world. Save anywhere, anytime. Save point teleportation system. Epic orchestra, orchestra background music. Gallery system contains character illustrations. Cool. Yeah, I like it. Man, if it included fresh air too, like that motorhome. Dude, I bet you if you walked into that motorhome, the musty, cig ancient cigarette smell would immediately, like you just, Punch the guy in the face and leave. He, like that lie. <laughs> Can we hear the music? Uh, wasn't there music? Just jump ahead of it. Wait. Is there no music? Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that music is perfect. Wait a second. Hang on. Oh, so nice. And then this, man. I mean, it makes it easy to animate. It is much easier to animate ragdolls than it is to animate like, or, or not ragdoll, but to do paper doll animation than it is to do traditional hand-drawn animation, but it's still pretty good. Anyway. Uh, very cool. We're gonna move on though. Definitely a solid yes. Shit.
shaky and indie, certainly, but but worthy of existing beyond so many other things we've seen. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is Mazgin, the Life Dungeon. Mazgin, Mazgin, Mazgin. That's an awkward name. There's a woman in that sar in a sarcophagus in that van waiting on her pharaoh to light her cigarette for her. What a spare. <laughs> you need to be a writer, man. You need to write like weird fucking like novels. That's a, that's a genius idea for uh, <laughs> worthy of existing. Yeah, that's that's my that's my that's the line I use. Uh, okay, here we go. Mazgin, the life dungeon. I'm hooked. G give me more of that. Okay, show me a video game. With a lot of treasures. And there is no way back when you get in. So there's some skeletons. seeing Face didn't like make the game feel even more claustrophobic than it already is like That was a very strange, strange game. I don't even know where to start with this. The voice acting is so bad. Dude, the voice acting in most games is trash. Uh, I, I don't really, bad silly voice acting is, is not really, <laughs> you can't really expect a whole lot uh, of games with no budget. I'm pretty sure it was made by one dude. So, I want to give credit where credit is due. 
who cares about voice acting? It's, it's whatever. It's it's an indie game. It's just something to chuckle at. It doesn't ruin the game, in my opinion. Some people take voice acting uh, a little more seriously than others. I don't really care. Uh, I have... If it's a triple-A game, I expect good voice acting. If it's an indie game, I can handle bad voice acting. Um, the art is pretty good. Uh, decent pixel art. Um, the backgrounds conflict a little bit, but you know, not a big deal. The interface, while well-made, is terribly placed. <laughs> but I, it, it's well-made. It's, it's pretty cool with like the dangling, like, um, it, it, yeah. So anyway, the interface is, is poorly placed and poorly sized, but it looks good. Uh, this is actually decent. This is pretty decent. Neat where how it shows the portrait in the background and like the sprite in the front. The UI is huge. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder, is this, is this a, like a, a weird mobile port thing or 1080p English voices and characters and most, for characters and most stuff, fully joypad support, retro chip tune. So yeah, where I am with this game, there are things I find interesting and there are things I definitely do not like, but I think, I think, um, I think the good outweighs the bad, believe it or not. It depends on the price, but I think, I don't know. This is weird and neat. It's like a weird, um, roguelike, uh, you know, roguelike dungeon crawler with a timer. Like, I don't, zero S. I wonder if that's like how much time you have left. One V four. Or level, that's level four. The thing where it's like you have four minutes to, to kind of conquer this dungeon. That's kind of cool. So do I think this is a masterpiece? Hell no. Do I think it deserves to exist? Yes. I think it's doing something different enough. And I, I'm not so big on the wizard combat. Would I play this? Probably never. Definitely not. The, the magic combat where you're like kiting and like shooting skeletons with fireballs. Not my jam at all. Uh, but I think this deserves a shot for sure. There's a lot going on here that's actually really impressive, but there's obviously a lot of shaky stuff as well. Uh, but I think it, I think it can, it, it, it's a go. I don't, I hate the name. Mazgian, the life dungeon. Horrible, horrible fucking name, but it's Spanish. I'm pretty sure, it, since it supports English and Spanish, I'm pretty sure the uh, developers are Spanish. Um, a random dungeon generation roguelike survival. In this game, you must learn how dungeons work, how dungeons works, and beat each one with the unique skills that each role character will offer you. Uh, choose between different characters and equip your preference items to start your dungeon. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not English uh, as a first language. That's fine. But yeah. The art is pretty good. It's a bit chaotic. Overall, I think it's it's worth a shot. Oh, Maze Plus Dungeon. Maze Dungeon. Maze Gin. No. It's, okay, so maybe it is supposed to, instead of Maze Gin, it's Maze Gin. Still terrible. <laughs> Change the name. Otherwise, I think it's a yes. Uh, I'm going to give it a not a very high rating. Uh because it's, it's a big mess, but it's a mess that I think could could have some potential. Give it a, give it a 59, because I don't think it's a 60 quite, it's not quite there, uh, but it's close, it's close. So yes, I think this, this can exist. 2.8 days until Kingdom Hearts 2.8. <clears throat> See, I'm gonna give it a 59. And we're gonna move on. Interesting though. Really, really interesting addition to Steam Greenlight. There's a lot going on there. Uh, there's a lot going on there that I don't think I've seen in a long time. But I think it's it's a bit misguided. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Cube creatures. I have a feeling this is gonna be worthy of existing. 
Well, it's like the whole like Caesar thing. It's like you you know you thumbs up and they get a promotion and they get a you know a new life and it's sweet and then you get the thumbs down and you go in the pit with the tiger and <laughs> you get wrecked. That's not actually how it works at all. But anyway, cube creatures. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, that was a harsh assessment, but come on, man. Really? A game where you play as a square? <laughs> A Chinese game where you play as a square that, that wishes it was Limbo? It said cube world, not square whatever. Cube creatures. These are squares. Backgrounds look nice. There's backgrounds? Oh, sweet. This is this has got to be the most the the most dull limbo inspired game I've ever seen. It's it's so oh good nice jump. It's so boring. Like I'm falling asleep watching this. I hate to say this because the music is nice and like the animations are nice, but it's a square in a world of shapes and it's very slow paced and th there's there's nothing here other than, you know, it's 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 if, whoa, okay, we don't want to look at that. Um, this is a, this is not anything. There was music. It's very quiet, like kind of moody music. This is if Limbo was replaced with developer graphics. Everything else moves so fast, why would they want the player moving that slow? That'd be infuriating to play. I'm getting restless watching it. Yeah, it's it's it looks like an early version of Limbo that was made uh, that where the art was just the developer art. Like generally coders and people who develop in games, a lot of times they don't have, you know, uh, they're, they're not artists. So they use like placeholder art or developer art or, or coder graphics, whatever. And it's usually like a square to represent the character. And you just move the square around and everything. And that looks like a game where they never put the character in. It was, they're just like, nah, fuck it, leave it as a square. I couldn't, I could never imagine paying money for a game like this when something like Limbo or Inside or a million other games, like they don't even have backgrounds. I mean, okay, there's some backgrounds here, certainly. The same thing copy pasted forever. Uh, I mean, the mouth, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but I, it's, no, it's just, it's not worth. 50 levels. I can't. I gotta give it a no. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 20 because I just don't. They seem like nice civil people. Yeah, no, fuck that. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 20 because it's so far behind. It's just so far behind. What, Velask? What if they charge a dollar for it? Uh, well, what's Limbo? Limbo's, Limbo's eleven dollars. I'm actually surprised by that. Uh, even if it were a dollar, it it's a game where you play as a square in a slow-moving, boring world where you solve really slow-moving, boring puzzles. 
I would even for I wouldn't I wouldn't play that if it was free. It just doesn't it's no. It's cool if you guys like it. If if it's if if you know a uh, a white cube in the world in a world of, of basic shapes. If that speaks to you and you'd play it, that's totally cool. I cannot. I would never. But if it was on, you know, if it's on Game Joy, it, this is the kind of thing that should just be free somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, even if it was free, I wouldn't play it, pay, play this, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone because there are so many other ones. Uh, so I'm gonna say no thanks. It's just, there's just nothing there. And like, there's no story. So presumably, like, like Limbo and Inside have stories as well as puzzles and this kind of aesthetic. So imagine if a game like Limbo was all developer graphics, no backgrounds, really subtle slow moving gameplay and music and no story because 2d platform adventure game few riddle minimalist graphics and control method only jump left or right no shoot no double jump <laughs> that's it 50 levels there's no story either so you're not really learning it's no this is a no i can't <laughs> Guys, I like simple. I like simple looking games. I'm making a simple looking game. What the hell? I'll, I'll, I'll show you what my simple looking game is currently looking like. If my mouse catches it, come on, mouse. I, I like. I like simple things. My game is very simple. Well, I'm not supposed to be in my game. Don't, don't worry about that. Let me just hide myself. But anyway. I like, I like simple pixely games. Games don't have to have incredible, amazing graphics or anything. I like really like lo-fi, simple pixel arty stuff. And I'm willing to give those a hundred if they're, if they stand out to me. Also this mouse is, is God tier. Anyway, uh, but no, <laughs> I, I can't see a game that's a few squares and some squares and it's, it's just not, I can't, I can't upload that. It's just not enough. Plus my game will be free. So if that square game had said free to play, it might've pushed me up to a 50 maybe because I don't think it's total shit. I just don't think it's worth money. Out of curiosity, if somebody were to create a solid RPG system that was designed to be run using a desktop phone tablet app and had high quality art and UI design, do you think it would be long on Greenlight? Oh yeah, of course. No, absolutely. I'm not saying if your game works, uh, how about them dead cells? How about them dead cells? What do you mean, Peep? Dead cells. What do you mean, dead cells? What's a dead cell? You mean from from Metal Gear? Dead cell. Wait, I missed the reference. Anyway, yeah, Bleeding Vargas. If your game, uh... oh, the game that I found on Greenlight. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's that's the one. I forgot the name of it. Um, yes, it looks super kick-ass. Holy shit, I want to play that so bad. Sorry, he said Dead Cell, and I'm like, Metal Gear? <laughs> Metal Gear? No, Dead Cells looks incredible. Time, my favorite type of pixel art has, uh, has what that woman assassin, just a single black pixel eyes with a face body uh, being super detailed. Well, good, Geistra. <laughs> Hopefully you'll like my game. That's, that's where I'm going with my art right now, is 32 by 32 sprites, enough, enough, pixels so you can tell what you're looking at but not so much that like the faces are ultra defined or all the characters are like super recognizable i like this i like the kind of anonymity of pixel art it's neat uh but yes Pete, that game looks incredible and yes bleeding bargus if if the game is good even if it's meant for mobile if we have upvoted mobile ports the thing is a lot of places take their generic boring garbage mobile game that f doesn't stand out at all on the iOS market or whatever then they put it on Steam and I give it the same treatment I'm like if I saw this on on my mobile phone store I would pass right by it because it looks like garbage 
Uh, but we have found a couple games that were mobile games and got ported, or they're being simultaneously made for mobile and for uh, for PC, and it's just like incredible. Isn't uh, Darkest Dungeon like a tablet game as well? I think. Is it Darkest Dungeon that has a mobile version? There's one like indie game we all played a whole bunch that has like a mobile port or a mobile version. And I would see that and I would be like, fuck yes, it looks amazing. You're specifically asking about a game system like D&D or Pathfinder is designed to run through an app. Oh, you mean like one that you would play like tabletop games with? Peeves. <laughs> Fucking pee. I can see you're having fun with those emotes. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is called Dark Grim Mariopolis. Mariu Mariopolis? Mariopolis? Team Mariopolis. What a weird name. I don't want to smoke but I can't stop. Great night, isn't it? This is, this is something. Wow, okay, that's weird. Is this, does this give us more? Oh, gameplay footage, okay. This is a game where I was about to say I need to see more. Gameplay footage. Great night, isn't it? Yes, oh yes, no, I guess, are your choices. Uh, great night for a murder. I'm going to give you a riddle. Believe me, you better solve it. No, please. We'll meet again, Thor. I wish I could have read what he said. Atari? This is not an Atari game. Are you drunk? <laughs> have you seen an Atari? This is... This is... No. <laughs> it's simple. But it's not, it's not an Atari game. So much text, I can't. Vikings bar? This looks like a game Ty would play. Uh, <laughs> I do enjoy weird point and click games. I, I, I hate the way the text is, is in like huge giant paragraphs that are like poorly positioned, but. Okay, hang on. I need to read some of this because I'm, I'm starting to wonder if it's because whether or not this is well written is going to make all the difference in the world. What is this? Okay. It isn't. Wolofil, pour me some beer, please. You know, this key you got on your neck doesn't look Viking-ish at all. Glad to see you, Thor. How's the album coming along? Do you really think so? You know, many see the Vikings as brainless raiders, but I just admire the simplicity and vitality of our culture. Yes, they did bring us the... Like, this would... I would hate... <laughs> Like I'm losing track of what line I'm on. Okay. Uh, all these patricians wasting money left and right while we had to work as security and bartenders. The city really got a weight off its shoulders after they burnt. Uh, but I'm, I'm intrigued. It's, it's very slow and it's trying to tell a story, but I, I'm gonna skip ahead a bit.
interesting. I, I, why line spacing matters. I don't know what to make of this. It's, uh, <sighs> how long have I been streaming for? Uh, a couple of years. Since like 2012, I think. I think 2012. Like late, late 2012 is when I started doing it like part time. And then I think I went full time like two years ago. It's weird, man. Ty, please, someone barely pieced this together. Yeah, it's... Here's the thing. I think what's what's hooking me right now is the aesthetic. I want a game that looks like this, but this isn't the game. I think this art is beautiful, believe it or not. I know I'm an artist and I do these crazy paintings and everything. I actually think this art, there's something like beautiful about it. Uh, there's something like weird, it's it's like the graphic design and like the, the kind of like clinical, almost scientific diagram feel of it, the color schemes, this robot. I actually really like the, the aesthetic, but I hate everything else about it. It's super slow, the animation is weak, the writing is atrocious. Like the writing, the, the, the way the text is arranged on the screen is atrocious. Uh, and the, uh, the actual writing, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's okay. It, nothing really hooked me. I just can't. It's, it's too, it's too disjointed. Maybe the, the description will be the make or break. Maybe. Also tie Russia. <laughs> Introducing Mariopolis. A classic adventure game set in a world combining noir, Greek mythology, magic mysticism, hopeless entourage uh, of Greco-Roman age of decadence and stifling everyday routine. Encourage yourself and step into the darkness. Enter Mariopolis, a dark place accompanied with confusing strange music of no visible source. You are some sort of detective and therefore you need to investigate. But why? What's the thing you are you are going to find out, or maybe not. Even depends on the sudden whims of Pentaculus, a grim god stretching its hands out over the whole city. Ah, again, I like the, uh, I like the aesthetics, but that's really all I like. I, it's, it's just not, it, I like point and click games and it's just not there. So I gotta say no. I'm gonna give it a... Um... Fuck, I love the visual so much. I'm gonna give it a 35. <laughs> and if they can do something with the text layout and the actual writing and pace it a little bit better and maybe speed some things up, I think it could be it could be a pretty cool adventure game, but it's not there, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. How long did it take for your stream to take off? Define take off. Um, I don't know. It was just a slow grind over the course of a very long time. I built a community piece by piece and so did my friends and we shared friends and viewers and everything and yeah, here I am. <laughs> it depends what you mean by take off because like, you know, I'm by no means a big streamer compared to, say, the top 100, uh, but I really like what I've created and it's, it's perfect for what I want. So yeah, I don't know. It depends. If you're looking for success in the in the style of like man versus game or I don't know, like like one of those big mega streamers, then like yeah, I'm not not anywhere near that. But I love exactly where I'm at where I'm at right now. No no no. When you got your sub button. Sub button was through. Actually, I got my sub button three years ago. F 40, I've had my sub button for 40 months. 40 months. <laughs> so three years and a little bit. Uh, but I've only been full time for about two years. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Gameplay Hero. <laughs> it's just a slow grind, man. It's, it's, 
There's no shortcuts. Uh, the only shortcuts that really exist in streaming are shoutouts. Shoutouts and raids and whatnot. Uh, so, oh, thank you, Laprosite. That means a lot. And hey, only Shady. Okay, but anyway, I, I can't quite do this. It Parts of my brain want this to work, but the actual execution is very poor. Like this screenshot, if someone sent me this screenshot or tweeted it and said, I'm making a game, I'd be like all about this. Be like, this is unique. This is cool as fuck. The graphic design, everything about it is cool. Then if I saw the gameplay and the writing, I'd be like, hmm, not quite there. Been going for a bit, you're at 200 followers. Nice, well, congratulations. What's the requirement for sub? You're, it'll take a while. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't worry about getting a sub button anytime soon. I would just worry about building your building your community and hanging on to viewers and doing fun things with them. Uh, back when I, when I got a sub button, you needed to be able to have 400 viewers three times a week. So you needed to have 400 current viewers three times a week to get a sub button. Now it's much lower. I think people with sub, people can get sub buttons with 100 viewers or even less, depending on some other stats. But when me and Peeve and Brandon and Nelson and all those guys got sub buttons, it was, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. It's about the same now. Oh, did they go back up? Okay, because it made a dip and then went back up. Probably because there's a lot of partners now and they're probably slowing it down. They don't hand them out like that anymore. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. I remember when me, Peeve, and Brandon and all of them, it was it was really tough. Neezy had to get 400 to 500 regularly to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Especially because Barneezy plays games other than, you know, Dark Souls, which was how we all kind of got there. There are partners with sub buttons uh, that pull in 50 viewers a night. It used to be easier. Yep. Okay, Cosmoprom. Okay. Oh, that frame rate though. This music is my jam. Oh, I'm ready. Take me, Cosmo Prom. <laughs> okay, so we've had about seven establishing shots. Different ships. Customize. Ooh, colors. That big fucking swell at the end. Oh, it's free to play. GG, peeve, we gotta upvote it. It's entirely Russian. But it's language English, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Russia? Russia, please. Don't tell me the game's in English and then give an entirely Russian description. It's amazing how, I mean, I wasn't gonna upvote this game anyway, but let's say I was. Let's say it looked really impressive. This is the biggest red flag. Entirely Russian description, boasts English language, single player co-op. We know nothing about this, so we can't go off of any description. We can only go off of what we saw, and what we saw was like, 
if Star Fox 64, no, not even Star Fox 64. If Star Fox, the original for the SNES, was, was, had nothing. It was just on a photo of a background and you're just dodging meteors and shooting at an enemy ship or avoiding an enemy ship. This is, this is a joke. This is a 15 out of 100 and I'm, I'm embarrassed. This is Russian shovelware at its finest. Oh. Look, I'll make you cry like a green light dev on prom night. Ooh, skull trumpet, why? No, this is horrible. Also, what is this logo? This is, there's just nothing here. I need a vote yet. <laughs> Not all Russophones are Russian. No, 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 I know that. I, ne I never said that. But this is a Russian description for an English game. There's, there's, no, no. If it said English comma Russian, and it had a Russian description, it would be much less of a, of a, uh, a problem. Because I totally respect games that are not in my language. I realize there are lots of games by lots of people who don't speak English. But you don't do this and then say it's in English. That's a lie. <laughs> Even though the, 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 the video description showed English, it's so weird that they just copy-pasted Russian. It, it just leads me to believe the whole thing is rushed. It's just a rushed joke. I can't, no. So 15 out of 100, no thank you. I think this is our last one, guys. Can this save the queue? We've had a few that were okay, and we've had a lot that were really bad. There were some rocks, 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, we need a vote and yet. No. Um, here we go. Magic rushed more like rushed in. <laughs> oh, guys, I like that a lot, actually. Rushed in. Rushed in. That's really good, guys. That's really good. Have a good one, Ark. Here we go. Magic adventures. I just want to see if there's an English version. No. Okay, so it's Spanish. Holy shit, what just happened? <gasps> this is all, is this all stock RPG Maker stuff? These portraits look really familiar. All of this looks really familiar. Although I, it's definitely stolen from someone. Oh, 
Okay, I can't. I mean, I'm not gaining anything more by watching this. Uh, you think that you're using Comic Sans? Oh, they are. They are. There's Comic Sans all throughout. There's a... Um, and uh, I recognize all these fonts. I just can't remember the names of some of it. Futura, I think is there. Um, anyway, yeah, the music is stock. The characters are all... I'd like to make a game with RPG Maker. Might be a fun hobby. hobby? Absolutely, Priscilla. I, I encourage everyone to follow their dream and make a game. I'm currently doing the same thing. In fact, just because we're, we're on the subject of it, and I like to just <laughs> I like to show off. I made a game, a game. Here, this is the, okay. I want to show you an, an exa a direct example. So I made a game. And by a game, I mean a little tutorial thing for myself. And a lot of the time, Steam Greenlight feels like I broke everything. Anyway, so I made a game. <laughs> if I can find my game, there it is. Uh, Baby's first RPG. So I made a game, and by game I mean, like I said, a little tutorial thing. Uh, but a lot of the time when I'm watching uh, Steam Greenlight and stuff, it looks like the games were little tests or little tutorials that people were just like, ship it, it's a game. So my game is you just walk around, it's like River City Ransom and you beat stuff up. There's also a version where my dog follows me around and there's gonna be like enemies and stuff, but I would never expect money for something like this. Because this is the equivalent of baby's first game. Also, I walk like a gorilla in real life and on the internet. Um, but, uh, but yeah. The problem is, this is not a game. This is just a, a fun little test thing. The game I'm actually making, I still won't even ask for money. It's gonna be free. Uh, but what I'm saying is that If you make something in RPG Maker and you use all stock everything, stock, voice stock, you know, or stock, um, assets stock, audio stock, everything, then it's like all that's left to judge your game, the hair colors stay on the same side. Uh, they flip, but it's kind of broken because when I stop moving, the hair like flips. There's some bugs. <laughs> also the punch animation sometimes skips a few frames and it, it plays the end of the punch before the beginning. Again, I'm a noob. I'm just learning how to do all this stuff. Um, I'm an artist who is learning how to program games, uh, but it's a lot of work. Uh, so yeah, the problem is if you make a game that's all stock, the only thing I can really judge your game on is your writing. In this case, it's in Spanish and that's fine. But as an English speaking, game reviewer. I can't speak Spanish. I have to, I can't make an assumption that your writing is good or bad or anything. So the only other thing I could go by is the gameplay and the animation and the, but none of that is, it's all stock. This is all built in RPG Maker or stuff from like the RPG Maker store. So I can't upvote this. It looks, it looks extremely generic and run of the mill. Maybe there's some amazing story going on, but I don't speak Spanish, so I, I can't, I just can't. So, uh, so yeah, unfortunately this is a no. But it has a famous streamer image. Twitch has just improved by 200%. Wait, what's going on? But anyway, that's, uh, so that's Magic Adventures. I kind of could tell by the title, thanks for wasting your money. <laughs> uh, I, I, I could kind of tell by the title and the, the font, the logo that this is gonna be a mess. And again, for anyone that wants to get into game design as a hobby and you want to try a game in RPG Maker and stuff, that's totally cool. That's great. I love that. Don't put it on Steam Greenlight unless you've shown it to a bunch of people and they agree and maybe put it on Game Jolt to, to get some feedback from the community. But don't do what this guy did and just make a game, baby's first RPG Maker game and put it up and just, you know, that's that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem with most of the stuff we see on Steam Greenlight is it's like, 
you know, a lot of times it's it's baby's first game, and it's like there's nothing here that sets you apart from anyone else. And it is it worth asking for money using stock RPG Maker stuff? Maybe, but probably not. I'm sure there are amazing games out there, a few of them, that use completely stock RPG Maker stuff. Uh, no, 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 One Shot is a perfect example. Of that. I'm not talking about RPG Maker as, as a software. RPG Maker, Game Maker, Unity, it doesn't matter what the tool is. Anyone can make, well, not anyone can make a game, but amazing games can be made in absolutely any technology. There's a game we looked at called Stone Story that's made using a text editor, and it's incredible. Uh, so, if you make a game in RPG Maker, totally cool. If you make a game in, in Game Maker, anything like that, totally fine. But the game itself is what we're reviewing. So when we see RPG Maker, some of you groan. You're like, oh, another RPG Maker game. I don't groan. I'm like, I've played plenty of RPG Maker games. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, One Shot was a good example. Witch's House, those games. Uh, uh, Father, Mad Father, uh, those were all in RPG Maker. Fucking Undertale was made in Game Maker. Hotline Miami was made in Game Maker. Uh, can not Cannibal, uh, that game where you run and stab each other with swords. Uh, uh, Tor not Torabash. Anyway, that game where you run and you stab each other with swords, that was, um, that was made in Game Maker. Like, Momodora was made in Game Maker. The technology doesn't matter. Nidhogg, that's the one. Technology doesn't matter. It's what you do with it. They're all just tools to make things in. And uh, this is just too generic, and I can't understand it, so I wouldn't even know. And it's, yeah, so th th there's nothing There's nothing here to, to review. Genital jousting, there you go. Mad daddy. <laughs> If a child made this, I'd be impressed of the way they are learning to program like this. If an adult made this, they need to stop making this. Exactly, Trent. Exactly. Or they need to, you know, to do something different. But again, Trent, it could be that I don't speak Spanish. Maybe some of you Spanish speakers in the chat read all the text and you're like, this is the most well-written thing I've ever seen. And I, I, this must exist, and you ran and, and uploaded it, and that's cool, but I couldn't. If your description of your game is a handful of sentences, that shows how much passion went into your game. That's true, Pete. That's another really good thing. Your Steam Greenlight page and how you present it, and like headers and like graphics and and everything, that means a lot. Uh, hey Ty, when's the next art stream? Could be tomorrow, soon, very soon. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty addicted to working on game stuff lately, if that's what you mean. If you mean for uh, art stream as in Pokemon paintings, probably within the next two or three days. 